In today's video, you'll learn six habits that instantly make you more attractive. We'll do this by breaking down some clips of Jack Harlow because he has an easy, authentic style of flirting that many women find extremely attractive. You make me nervous. You've been making me nervous this whole interview. Oh, oh, Jack, no, don't Jack. tempt me. I'm a married woman, but I'll leave him. Oh, don't I'm say gonna that. leave right now. <laughs> Let's start at the beginning with how to start a conversation. A big part of attraction is confidence, and you can show that confidence in the first 10 seconds of an interaction if you approach without hesitation. So, Weedy, how it feel doing numbers? Hey, hey, girl, what's up? Hi, sweetie. Hi. Jack. I know. Good to see you. Most guys know they should approach without hesitating, but they get too nervous, or their mind goes blank and they can't think of anything to say. So you end up circling the venue a few times without talking to anyone, or glancing over a bunch of times before you approach, which sabotages your first impression. One thing that helps here is if you have an opening sentence you know you like. This isn't a constraint against being spontaneous, it's a backup plan in case your mind goes blank. Here are Jack's two favorite opening lines. What's your best chat up line? Oh, hi. Was that it? Undefeated. Hi. You know what else is undefeated? Hi, I'm Jack. Of course, Jack has some big advantages over most people. He's a rich, famous celebrity. Saweetie even says she already knows who he is. But there is a riff on this line that anyone can use to start a conversation, especially at an event where it's possible you know a lot of people, like a house party or local bar. It's, hey, I don't think I've met you yet, I'm Jack. Except, say your name. Adding the phrase, I don't think I've met you yet, helps your approach feel more natural. It explains why you're introducing yourself so it feels less randomly creepy, and it implies that you're social and you know a lot of people at the venue, at least enough that they stand out to you as someone you haven't met yet. This is a super easy way to get in a conversation, but it won't magically make someone fall in love with you. In fact, even Saweetie doesn't initially show much interest, instead playfully making fun of Jack. Watch how he handles it. Why are you shaking? Emma? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nobody's shame. shaking. Nobody's oh, shaking. Shame. Jack, step into the shade room. So that brings us to habit number two. If someone teases you, assume they're being playful and take it positively. Some people will hear this advice and think it will make them look weak, but it's actually having a defensive response that makes you look reactive and less attractive. What's something that you really hate about a guy? When I'm trying to go to the bathroom on 6th Street and they're like, hey, can I ask you a question? <laughs> you? We got the same thing, we gotta go. Well, y'all fucking saw. He would have looked more confident if he had been able to laugh along with her joke. Now, if they said something truly offensive to you, then obviously you don't have to stay playful. But at that point, don't worry about being attractive to someone who's genuinely rude to you. Better to find someone else to talk to. Okay, so let's get a bit more specific. What does taking a tease positively actually look like? Here's an easy framework you can steal from Jack. Step one, fake defensiveness. You say something defensive, but with a big smile. This shows that you're actually unfazed. For example, watch how Jack reacts when someone says something that could have been offensive to a lot of rappers at his level. Here we are, you're nominated tonight. But what I realized is, and I thought, I thought you had, I thought you had already won a Grammy before you haven't. So what would it mean Thanks for you for to, me. what would it mean for you though to win a Grammy tonight? Cause tonight can be a huge night for you. I mean, it's an honor to be nominated. Yeah, I mean a lot, you know, maybe when I do this interview next year, you won't be able to say that. So I'll feel good. <laughs> Step two, you can playfully tease them back. I like drama. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You like drama. Yeah, I'm messy. I think it's, I, I'm messy too. No, I'm not messy, but thank you for admitting you are. I just, <laughs> okay. We don't, we're about to be done because you don't call me out twice on this called interview. You, out. <laughs> you called me First out. First thing I have when I walked over here, you said, you know, you don't have any Grammys. How does it feel? <laughs> Away. This ties right into habit number three, push-pull. Use a mix of teases and compliments. Push-pull makes conversation with you more fun because you're not predictable. Your teasing helps people get laughing and builds attraction, and your compliments make people feel good around you and show that your teasing doesn't mean you dislike them. For example, watch how Jack breaks the tension in that last conversation. You've been nominated three times, yeah. but you haven't won. It could be a huge Six night times. for you. Six times, three, three times, times tonight. Year. Oh, three times no, I'm today. You're good. You're great. Um, thank you. One thing some men struggle with is complimenting a woman in a way that's not creepy. It's much easier to give a compliment and not come off creepy if you give a compliment that you would give regardless of if you're attracted to the person or not. Hello, Jack Harlow. How you doing? Y'all know how to make a man smile. That's for sure. <laughs> wow. You just brought a smile to my face, brother. <laughs> You just warm my soul up. If you give someone a compliment, especially a physical compliment, you want to say it like you aren't trying to get anything back for it. The vibe Jack gives off is that he's simply saying what he thinks is true without expecting anything in return for the compliment. Ah, you know, is someone here though that you got your eye on? Let me see. I'm right here, Jack. Just kidding. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, you're beautiful. I just, you know, ah. 
I, uh, I thought you meant somebody on this sheet y'all got right here. Again, this is health by his experience saying compliments about people he doesn't have sexual interest in. Can't even name who was on it. Dejounte Murray was on it. Oh my God. Yeah, he's a good player. Take that back. Oh, nice. Love me some Dejounte Murray. He's smooth as hell. He's like a jaguar. Love his body. Love how he moves. Yeah. Man. This is the second time you've said that you love somebody's body. What? You saying I'm showing too much love? To really people? keeping it. In your own life, if you want to practice this skill, make it easy for yourself and start with non physical compliments. And don't force yourself to give compliments you don't mean just to practice. The practice is when you do think of something positive about someone, share it with them. That ties closely to another thing that makes Jack attractive honesty in situations where a lot of guys would lie. So, what's your type? My type? Mm hmm. Dark hair. You might think he's purposefully saying her opposite, but he said this in multiple interviews, it's just his truth. Also, did you notice that when he says it, he smiles? There's a playful self-amusement in saying something he knows isn't the answer most guys would give. That self-amusement is also attractive. Here's one more example. What, like, is the most romantic thing you've done for someone? Bought them a plane ticket. Was it a private jet? No. Oh. Back. Economy. 58C. Beautiful women are used to guys who will say anything to try to get a date. So ironically, you stand out when you don't seem like you're trying hard to impress them. In general, Jack gives off a cool calm vibe because he isn't desperate for a romantic connection. You saw that in that earlier clip where the woman says, I'm right here, Jack, and it's consistent in his interviews. Okay, uh, well, I hear that you got a song called Dua Lipa on the, on the album. Yeah, it's true. Do you want to go on a date with her? I'd be open-minded, you know? I just, uh, you know what I really like to do with Dua Lipa? Yeah. Like, oh. And was that you shooting your shot at Saweetie? That was me saying hello, but you can't say hello these days, I guess. You can say hello, but you know it was a nice hello, like a real smooth hello. I'm a nice person. Okay. Would you ever shoot your shot at Saweetie? Nah, that's a, that's a friend. That's a friend vibe. Notice he doesn't say they aren't beautiful. He's not putting them down. He's just not instantly all in. If you show interest in dating someone just because they're attractive, it makes you less attractive. To be attractive, have standards beyond beauty. You'll be more interesting and you'll avoid relationships with people who aren't right for you. One thing that can help you have better dating standards is having other things in your life that you care about. In Jack's case, he's open to dating, but his top priority is music. It's his career and his passion, and he cares more about it than meeting women or partying. Even when first class goes number one, how do you celebrate? Everybody was like, come on, like, let's at least do champagne and shit. We went, we went to the studio. Everyone in there took, um, took some champagne. I didn't drink, but I felt good. I'm just head down right now. This isn't to say that in order to be attractive, you have to only care about work. That's not a recipe for happiness. You want a balanced life with friends or family you care about and a career or hobbies you're passionate about. A life you're happy with even if you aren't dating. When you have other things you care about in your life, you won't be desperate to date just anyone which ironically will make more people want to date you. The second thing that helps you create standards beyond beauty is having options. When you feel like someone is the only person that could possibly make you happy or worse, perhaps the only person that could possibly like you, it's almost impossible for you to be attractive. If you feel you need them, you can't help but act needy. There are a lot of ways to build a life with more dating options. You can work on your appearance, talents, social circles, social status, or career, just to name a few. But the fastest way I know of to build a life with options is to develop your charisma. Becoming world-class in most things takes years, sometimes is decades. But with charisma, you can massively improve in just a month or two. Most people simply never try to learn it, or if they do try, they don't know how to do it effectively. If you want the fastest way I know of to develop your charisma so you can quickly start living life with more options, you may like our Charisma University. It's a step-by-step -step video program that tells you exactly what to do every day so that 30 days from now you radiate confidence and charisma. Rather than tell you about the program myself, here are a few things that past members have said. Life-changing. I went from being socially awkward with few friends to the life of every event that I attend. I also went from having serious girl problems to dating the girl of my dreams. Loving the course. I've liked a girl for over a year now, but never thought much of it because I thought she was too pretty. Took your lessons, gave things a shot, and now we're dating. Thank you so much for this program. After going through charisma, I've made more friends, have higher self-esteem, and can more easily talk to people I don't know. I've solidified my values, and I know who I am. We guarantee Charisma University will change your life. That means you can take the entire course, and if you don't think it's worth the investment, you can give yourself a full refund just by pushing a button. If you want to see if it's right for you, click the link on screen now or in the description below. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.